Okay, guys, today we are going to talk about Hess's Law Part 2, so building on the reactions and flipping them that we had done yesterday. All right, so today we are going to use those enthalpies of formation, not just to write uh, the reactions and their enthalpies beside, but actually in a formula, which I think is a bit of a simplified version of Hess's Law. Okay, but you still have to know how to do either method of Hess's Law. So they could give you any kind of problem like this on your diploma. All right, so here's that formula. And I think it is simple, even though it does look like a bit of a complicated formula. So I'll walk you through it. Um, so it says that the enthalpies of formation or reaction, we can change that little to F to a little R, and it's at standard conditions. Okay, so we can calculate this for a reaction is equal to the sum of the number of moles times the enthalpy of formation standard of all of the products. So I'm going to do that for each product minus the sum of the number of moles times the standard enthalpy of formation of all of my reactants. Okay, now one thing to note, the standard enthalpy of formation for any um, element in its elemental state, of course, is zero. It doesn't take any energy to make an element. It's already there. The earth did that for us, all right? So, again, this is the sum of the coefficient um, of a balanced uh, chemical equation multiplied by its molar enthalpy of formation um, of each of the products. And we find those molar enthalpies of formation in our data book, right? okay? Minus... The sum of the coefficient um, from a balanced equation multiplied by its respective molar enthalpy of the reactants. Okay, so again, it's final minus initial as we always know it to be. So make sure you write down this equation or at least understand it well enough to implement it everywhere in where it's needed. All right, so we are going to use our balanced equation um, to find the enthalpy of photosynthesis, okay? And we're going to use that new equation for Hess's law here. So I'm just going to write out the balanced formula, or sorry, equation. All right, so I've written out my balanced equation for photosynthesis where we have CO2 and water as a liquid making oxygen and glucose, okay? So remember that it takes water to make a plant grow clearly in its liquid form. I also took the time to write out our equation that we're going to use. So let's start with the products. The sum of the... Uh, moles, which is always the number in front of the balanced um, compound, times its own molar enthalpy of formation. All right, so let's get started here. Um, so if we start with a product, we're going to start with oxygen. Now remember, oxygen has six moles, but its molar enthalpy of formation is zero kilojoules per mole because of course, it's an element, okay? Plus, because it's the sum, times one mole of glucose, which has a molar enthalpy of formation of negative 1,273.3 kilojoules per mole, okay? Now, that is subtracted by... 6 moles of CO2, which is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole, plus 6 moles of water in its liquid form. So be sure that when you're looking up its molar enthalpy of formation that you're looking at water as a liquid rather than water as a vapor here. Okay, so liquid, it is negative 285.8 eight kilojoules per mole. All right, so when I do all of that math there, I should get a positive 2,805, or sorry, 8,002, oops, 0.5 kilojoules, okay? All of the moles cancel out because moles are on the bottom of kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that means that this is endothermic because it is positive, and this is to create one mole of glucose. Okay, so I can actually write this as the molar enthalpy of this um, reaction and include this as an energy term as is. So remember, when I want to write a thermochemical reaction, I always have to have it in its molar enthalpy. 
All right, so I'm just going to take a moment and explain where this equation came from. So we can use our molar enthalpies of formation um, from each reaction here uh, to add up and find the enthalpy of this reaction. All right, now what we need to do is multiply them and flip them to get everything where we want. So we want to keep this as a product. Its coefficient is 1. That looks good. We need to multiply this by 6 to get C 6 CO2s. And I also need to flip it, so I need to change the sign of the enthalpy here. And same thing with water. Okay, so these values all came from my data booklet again. And I'm just going to show you exactly how this equation came to be. Okay, so I took the time here to flip our equations um, and rewrite them and also multiply their energy terms or enthalpy, sorry, terms here as well. Okay, so again, I left this one the same, flipped and multiplied by 6, flipped and multiplied by 6 because of that coefficient. So, when we look here, anything that was a product in the equation we're looking at I didn't do anything to its term in terms of its sign so I just kept it as is um, any sort of multiplication well I only really multiplied by one here and because oxygen is in its elemental form I don't even need to write its formation reaction so this is just as is as a product so it would be the 1273.3 plus something okay now, all of these have been multiplied and flipped, so I have multiplied their um, sign, or sorry, their enthalpy, not only by the coefficient, so n, ho -ho, but also by negative 1. So when I looked at my um, formula, or my equation for Hess's law, I see that anything that is a reactant, I had to flip its reaction, okay, which also meant multiplying its sign by that negative. So the coefficient, the negative, and the sum, it's all taken into account what happens over here. So we added them up, the sum. We multiplied each reaction by its coefficient. Sorry, I forgot to multiply the numbers here, so there should be um, a 6, a 6, and a 3. My bad, guys. So it all comes down to this reaction, and it just explains exactly what we've done by adding, flipping, multiplying our reactions here. Okay, so let's keep doing this, uh, but let's write the balanced equation for cellular respiration and then calculate its enthalpy of reaction as well. All right, so one thing that's really important for you guys to note is that water is given off as a water vapor here. So in photosynthesis, it takes it as a liquid. The state is different when you flip the reaction um, to talk about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is just uh, one type of combustion. It takes um, some sort of hydrocarbon, more specifically glucose, uh, and it burns it in the presence of oxygen to give water vapor and CO2. Okay, so if we get started with our calculation here, uh, we always talk about our products first because uh, that's the way our formation reaction is written and we don't actually have to flip its sign. So we get that this is equal to the sum of 6 moles of water. And water now has an enthalpy um, for a gaseous form is 241.8 kilojoules per mole plus 6 moles of um, CO2 at negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole minus because we're flipping our reactions now to get our reactants um, and we only have one mole of glucose at negative 1,000 oops negative 1,273.3 kilojoules per mole and because oxygen is an element in its elemental state, I don't actually have an enthalpy of formation for it because it's zero. So I'm not even going to include it there. When I go through the math here, I'm going to get negative 2,538.5 kilojoules. Okay, that's how much energy is given off. It's exothermic now um, by this reaction. So the burning of one mole of glucose. Okay, so again, I can include this as a term in my thermochemical equation because this is per one mole of C6H12O6, or six moles of oxygen burning in glucose. Um, you can relate it to everything, but usually I just try and relate it to the one thing that is burning in this case. Okay?
All right, guys, I have one more example here for you, but I'm just going to give you the answer. So if you'd like to try it on your own, that'd be good. I got negative 24 point eight kilojoules when I went through this. If you get a different answer, please let me know. All right, that's it for today, guys. Uh, we're going to have more time to work in class tomorrow um, on all of these practice problems, as well as the stuff from t yesterday, if you were working on your calorimetry lab. Uh, we are going to do another lab, um, because this, I think, will be our last one of the unit. Um, so we're going to do the Hess's Law Lab on page 375 of your textbook, if you could prep for that by reading it and making data tables of things that you might need to be collecting um, or spaces for observations throughout the lab that would be fantastic.